Question 1a. Graph play an important role in scientific investigations. What are the uses of graph? Actually, in the textbook page 12, there is a discussion about analyzing graph to summarize and investigations. And here, the book lists down five ways to analyze graph. And actually, these are also the users of graph. Okay, so uh, let's go into the details of each of these users one by one. Okay, first to investigate the relationship between two variables. This is actually the major use of the graph. By interpreting the shape of the graph, we can always tell the relationship between the quantity represented by the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. For example, if the graph is a straight line, then we know that the rate of change between these two quantities are a constant. And if it's uh, straight lines that passes through the origins, then we know that these two quantities are at proportions. Okay, or we can say that they are directly proportional. Okay, yep. So it means from the shape of the graph, we can tell the relationship between the two variables. The third use of the graph is to calculate the quantity represented by the area under the graph. Area under the graph means the area in between the graph line and the x-axis. So this area, this shaded area is the area under the graph. Now, uh, the quantity represented by the area under the graph is equal to the products of the these two axes. For example, um, let's say we draw a graph of uh, force uh, applies on a spring and the extensions of the spring. Okay, and let's say we get a straight line. Okay, if we calculate the area under the graph, which is this area, okay, so this area is equal to the product of f and x, yeah, which is f times x, uh, fx, and fx is equal to the work done in physics. Okay, in physics, work done is equal to force times the uh, distance move. Uh, Okay, so this is equal to work done. Therefore, uh, from this graph, we can calculate the work done that uh, stretch the spring. Okay, by just calculating the areas under the graph. Okay, so this is one of the use of the graph. Fourth, we can use the interpolations of the graph to determine the values of a physical quantity. For example, in this case, let's say we would like to know when x equal to uh, 1.5, uh, which is here. Okay, when x equals to 1.5, then uh, what is the corresponding values of y? Yeah? Okay, so therefore, from this graph, yeah, 1.5, then uh, we draw a line. We draw a line. Okay, until it touch the graph line here, and then we uh, we draw another lines to the left. Okay, and then we can see the corresponding values of x, which is uh, uh, related to uh, this value. From here, we can see that it's about uh, 39, 39. So, so from these interpolations of graph, we can tell that when x equal to 1.5, our y equals to 39. Okay, or uh, let's say we would like to know uh, when y equal to 25, uh, when y equal to 25, then what is the corresponding x value? So we draw a line from the left to right, okay, after uh, when we touch this point, then we move down, okay, then we can see that this is the corresponding uh, x value uh, to this 25, and from here we can see that it's about 2.4 is 2.4 okay so therefore we know that when x equal to 25 then our x is equal to 2.4 okay ah, so this is interpolations of graph uh, to determine certain value from the graph lastly uh, the extrapolations of graph to make uh, predictions uh. okay now <clears throat> sometimes in experiments we can only uh, do experiments in a certain area. For example, in this case, we can only do the experiment for the x values equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so due to certain limitations, we can do experiments for x equal to uh, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. We are not able to do that. 
However, okay, by extrapolations of the graph, extrapolations means to extend the graph line, extend the graph line to the area which is not covered by the experiments. So we extend the graph line until this area, uh, then we can predict the values, certain values, okay, uh, from the graph. For example, we can predict that when our x equal to negative 3.2, then our y is equal to 1. Okay, so uh, extrapolations of graph can help us to predict uh, the values of certain quantities that is not covered by the experiments. Okay. Okay, now let's see the answer for question 1a. Now. What are the uses of graph? Uh, the first one is to interpret the relationship between the two given variables. Huh? And the second one is to determine the physical quantity represented by the gradients of the graph. And the third one is to determine the physical quantities represented by the area under the graph. After that is to determine the values of physical quantity using interpolations. And lastly, to make a predictions through extrapolations of graph. Question 1b. Graph play an important role in scientific investigation. Explain the main steps taken in the process of plotting a graph. Okay, now the very first step in plotting a graph is to determine the quantity represented by both axes. If we are asked to draw a graph of P against Q, then the quantity in front, which is the P, must be the vertical axis and the quantity at the back here must be the horizontal axis. However, if no instructions is given, uh, then the horizontal axis is always, always the manipulated variable, whereas the vertical axis is always the responding variable. After we have decided the axis of the graph, then we need to label both axes with the correct quantity together with the correct units. Um, it is very frequent for students to forget to label the axis. Huh? Okay, so make sure that every time when you draw the graph, check again and again that you have labeled both axes together with the unit. Okay, after we have decided the axes and labeled the axes, the next things that we need to do is to determine the scale for both axes and we need to choose a suitable scale for both axes. The suitable scale that we can use is 1 cm to 1, 2 and 5, including the different uh, orders of magnitude. For example, if we are asked to uh, draw the graph okay the scale that we can use uh, okay let's say this is 1 cm 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm okay so the, the the scale that we can use is 1 cm to 1 okay or uh, 10 20 30 okay this is okay or uh, or uh, 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 uh, this is 1 to 2 eh? 1 cm to 2 or we can use a uh, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15. Uh, this is uh, 1 cm to uh, 5. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, these are the scales that we can use. Uh, uh, we cannot use the scale, for example, 1 cm to 3. Okay. Uh, so this is not acceptable. Yeah, we can't use this scale or you say uh, or uh, you can say, OK, I would like to use a scale 1 cm to 7, 14 and 21. No, we cannot use that. Huh? These are uh, not suitable scale. The suitable scale is 1 cm to 1, 2 and 5, including their different orders of magnitude. OK. After we got both axes ready with the labels and scale, then we plot all the points on the graph, and the point must be, uh, and the points must cover at least half of the graph paper. Okay, this is also important. And then so after that, we draw a smooth line with lines of best fit. Now, what is lines of best fit? Line of best fit is a line where the, distrib the distributions of the points are balanced between two sides of the graph line. For example, let's say we draw a graph line, okay, and the number of lines above the graph line and the number of the lines, oh sorry, a number of the 
and the number of points below the graph lines are more or less the same, okay, equal or more or less equal, uh, then this is considered uh, lines of best fit. Other than that, uh, all the points must also be close to the line, uh, as close to the line as possible. For example, let's say we have all these points, okay, we have plot all these points and then we decided to draw this line. Okay, and then so you can argue that uh, this is also balanced, eh? okay, because the numbers of the points to the left is equal to the number of points to the right. However, these points are very far away from these lines. Okay, so therefore it's not a line of best fit. Okay, so for line of best fit, other than the distributions of the line must be uh, balanced, okay, and all the points must be as close as possible to the graph line. Okay, yeah? so these are the important steps uh, in plotting a graph. Question two, figure 1.13 shows a graph obtained from a studies to investigate the relationship between volume V and temperature theta of a fixed mass of gas. Based on the graph given in figure 1.13, answer the following questions. Question A, what happens to V when theta increases? Now this is a straight line. Straight line means that uh, V or X changes at a constant rate. Okay, so and then we can also see that when the temperature theta increases, uh, the volume is also increases eh? and it increase at a constant rate. Okay, so therefore uh, the answer is V will increase at a constant rate when theta increases. Question 2b. Determine the values of theta when the volume is zero. Show on the graph how you determine the values of theta. Okay, uh, so the vertical axis is the volume and the volume equal to zero is here. And then, uh, then from here we can see that when the volume equal to zero, uh, we can't see uh, the values of the theta, okay? Yeah, because uh, the temperature doesn't cover this part here. Uh, uh, so what can we do is we extrapolate the graph. Let's zoom into the graph first, okay? So um, to extrapolate the graph means that we extend these straight lines to the area which is not covered by the experiment, okay? So we draw a straight line, okay, until it meet uh, the horizontal axis. So this is where the volume equal to zero. And from here we can see that the reading is uh, negative 240. Yeah, negative 240. So therefore, when the volume is equal to zero, the temperature is equal to negative 240 degrees Celsius. Question 2C. Determine the values of V when theta equal to 300 degrees Celsius. Show on the graph how you determine the values of V. Uh, temperature equal to 300 degrees Celsius is here. Then we can also see that um, the experiment doesn't cover this area as well. So uh, we do the same thing. We extrapolate the graph. Let's zoom in first. Okay, so to extrapolate the graph, we extend the straight line. Okay. And after extending the straight line, then uh, from the temperature 300 degrees Celsius, we draw a dotted line vertically uh, above this axis until it touched the graph line. Eh? Until it touched the graph line, uh, then we draw another line to the left, and we can see that the corresponding values of the volume eh, is 22 centimeter cube. Okay, when uh, the temperature equal to 300 degrees Celsius, uh, the volume is equal to 22 centimeter cube, and therefore uh, the answer is 22 centimeter cube.